When I consider the representation of time in a movie, I observe both the indefinite progression of existence within a film's storyline and the chronological or non-linear aesthetic in which a story is portrayed. Some movies unfold their story backwards, revealing the end to the audience and taking them back to the beginning. Other movies depict a disjointed narrative in which the viewer must piece together time and place out of chronological order. Within the narrative itself, time may slow to a crawl or be utilized as an essential aspect of the character's conflict and journey. Time is a measurement of impending reward or imminent danger. But what could be said about a film wherein the laws of time are nearly removed entirely? A film resonating with a deeper conflict about the concepts of eternity versus entropy, of progression versus stagnation, of light versus dark. That film is Boulevard Nights, and I have a few reasons why it's worth a view. Boulevard Nights was released in 1979. Director Michael Pressman and screenwriter Desmond Nakano took on the ambitious task of spotlighting the gang culture of Mexican-American East LA communities on film. Although they were criticized and protested for their portrayal of Chicanos, they were simultaneously recognized for involving the locals within the locations they filmed as both actors and advisors. Their movie appears to be a straightforward tale of two brothers who walk a different path, with the main focus on Raymond's struggle to appease his girlfriend Shady while mentoring his younger brother Chuko. The moral of the story ultimately condemns the choice of gang activities in favor of pursuing a career and settling down in marriage. The film also reiterates the age-old lesson of an eye for an eye leads to nothing but blindness by showcasing the consequences of pursuing vengeance. However, Boulevard Nights is interesting because of the way it must communicate the depth of its characters and environment, which goes beyond the actor's dialogue and into the intrinsic aesthetic of the unspoken. Color plays an important function in the film, and Raymond is the best example of its purpose in providing further psychoanalytical insight into a character. Blue is Raymond's favorite color, and he's wearing some form of blue in almost every scene throughout the film. Blue is the color of his car, the color of his shirts and jeans, all blue from light to royal shades. Some universal aspects of blue fit well into Raymond's character as blue represents calmness, confidence, and full of as much optimism as the vast blue sky, as much opportunity as the endless blue water. Blue can also represent a sense of melancholy, and there are glimpses of Raymond's sadness when he worries for Chuko, or in his defensiveness around Shady. Yet for the most part, Raymond remains collected and arrogant to the point of chauvinistic while he's in his blue, but his focal color is pointedly missing during any scenes when Raymond is aggressive and domineering. In fact, it is during these scenes of aggression that Raymond reverts to a white tank top, the same type of color and clothing worn by the majority of gang members in the VGV, of which he is a former member. Perhaps Raymond's blue ore is the manifestation of a veneer he must put on in order to facilitate his leaving of the gang culture into the autonomy of the workforce. Maybe it shades the weight of resentment for being the head of his mother's house, responsible for his brother his choice of work looked down upon by his girlfriend, and reproach for his leisurely pursuits in the lowrider community. The other characters share similar identities with their own particular colors. Mrs. Avila sticks mostly to green, which corresponds with springtime renewal, healing, and peace. She's portrayed as a sweet, loving woman who cannot stay angry at her sons. Even in the depths of Chuko's despair, his mother is the one person able to get him to dance. Perhaps, her misfortune is symbolic of Mother Nature's eventual fall to the rise of man's invention and inherent propensity for violence. Shady Landeros wears a mixture of colors throughout the film, indicating her transcendence from the barrio. When she's in her neighborhood, Shady is associated with white, which has a greater significance and alignment to the local gang, the VGV. However, when she's a part of the movie's transcendental constructs of American society, such as work and marriage, she wears solid colors of pink, tan, and a dress of coalescent coloring to signify the bridge of all the worlds in which she belongs. This constant change of coloring in her wardrobe represents the aspect of progression in a world where there is no real sense of time beyond the occasional flashes of Raymond's watch or Chuko being late for work. Progress seems inevitable, 
but Boulevard Nights depicts progress as a choice for its characters. Shady wants Raymond to leave behind his interests with the cars and the boulevard. She wants him to take an office job and join the ranks of corporate America as she has. She's unhappy with the relationship because it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, like progressing to marriage. She even discourages Raymond from seeking his own brand of vengeance because she fervently believes the police will take care of everything. Her trust is in the systems of an industrialized and thus marginalized society. Raymond must choose between the progression of time through a future with Shady or to remain in stagnation with his brother Chuko. According to Professor Jose Navarro, the scenes with Chuko and his gang do not simply represent historical nostalgia, but a sense of regression, an active resistance to progress. He further states that this clash of modernity against traditionalism is underscored by the movie's soundtrack, which features disco for Raymond and doo-wop for Chuko. Indeed, Chuko certainly appears out of place whenever he becomes isolated from the VGV. He performs terribly during his job interview, seems awkward when greeted by Shady, and cannot bring himself to show up for his brother's wedding. Initially, Chuko comes across as unintelligent and anxious, but that misunderstanding of him is easily acceptable when the viewer only relies on whenever Chuko speaks because his character is surrounded by symbolic meanings. First, there is his natural inclination towards animals. The crow he keeps in a cage foreshadows change, mischief, and death. He also asks if the bird is his friend, revealing a desire to be accepted by a creature that can never understand him, much like his relationship with society outside of the VGV. When he is desperately alone, Chuko consoles himself with a cat, humanizing him as he devolves into the gang lifestyle. He even gets a tattoo of a snake on his arm, signifying his shedding of an old skin and emerging as a more confident and vocal member of the VGV. Chugo's clothing is another indicator of his personality, as he is seen shifting between the blue patterns of his brother and the whiteness of the street gang. Chuko can be interpreted as the little brother who can never live up to the standard his older brother has set. Whereas Raymond is an early riser, Chuko sleeps in. Where Raymond is physically active and fit, Chuko must be reminded of what exercise equipment does what. Raymond has aspirations to run his own auto shop one day, yet Chuko cannot hold a job. Raymond has a beautiful girlfriend and is treated like an adult. Chuko is single and remains treated like a child. Within this constant polarity of comparison in which he lives, is it a wonder why Chuko is attracted to the relatively stable and predictable existence of the VGV? It is with the street gang that Chuko is emboldened to holler at the woman on the street or craft an intimidating message to his rival gang, 11th Street. The VGV becomes its own little universe within itself, where there are no bosses or clocking in, or any other societal pressures to be felt. But most curious of all is the color chosen for the group's representation, whiteness. A remarkable feature of this movie is the absence of any prominent white characters, with only a brief introduction and appearance of Shady's boss, Mr. Warren. Any other white actors are regulated to roles as police or in the background of the inner city business environment, providing the world our main characters live in with a haze of seclusion. Within this haze, time becomes irrelevant for Draymond and Chuko, and the meanings of their colors become more profound. The paint and colors of the gang members' vehicles are dull and distorted, reflecting a fragmented state of being for the drivers and passengers. The VGV wardrobe consists primarily of white, whether it is tank tops or t-shirts, which could be the filmmaker's idea of displaying a perversion of the sanctity and purity of whiteness. Nevertheless, I prefer to see the white color as a representation of something incomplete, of a lost innocence within these young men. White is a reminder that the gang is not inhuman. No matter the levels of drug abuse or violence they commit, that none of them are beyond redemption in some way and a clean slate could be within their grasp. These are the fallen angels that society has deemed forsaken, and in their desperation for survival, in a world that has left them behind, they destroy one another. The film suggests that the problem of choice is what defines the path of a person for either good or bad, but fails to address the socio-political influences and economic obstacles that shape the lives of the barrio, leaving many impoverished, uneducated, and unskilled. The film doesn't explain any of this background because it doesn't have to. It's already accepted for being what it is from the very beginning. At the start, 
we are introduced to a world where violence and desolation already exist. A world divided by night and day, yet time is inconsequential. Where daytime consists of work and levity, the night brings danger and murder. No one ever says what day it is or makes a definite appointment of time by hours and minutes. So the only indication of time's evolution is from night to day to night and back to day in a repetitive cycle that parallels the violent reoccurrences of the VGV and the 11th Street gangs. The night denotes destruction and trouble, whereas the day provides opportunity of upward mobility. While Raymond takes further steps to his own sense of growth, indicating a mode of progression towards a brighter future, other characters seem caught in a vicious loop of being stuck in time. This stagnation of character can be seen in their clothes as the gang members do not seem to change. Chuko is constantly pulled both ways within this loop, but appears to cement his fate with the VGV once Big Happy gives him his hat. Because there is no indication of how much time has gone by from the beginning of the movie to the end, day and night are merely backdrops to the world of seclusion. Both serve as personifications of the character's hopeful optimism and their self-destruction. The movie begins at dusk, with a fateful encounter that accelerates and exacerbates an already potent rivalry between the street gangs. And the movie ends at sunrise, with a bittersweet outlook of an uncertain future. Yet it seems as if these characters could easily go through the same exact motions of their days and nights forever, leaving them in a paradise of infinity. Every time Chuko attempts to progress like his brother, the cycle is disrupted, and disaster is invited. When he reconciles with his family, there is a heavy loss to balance out the gains. When Chuko sacrifices himself for the benefit of his brother and to prevent further provocation between the street gangs, we become witness to the film's most violent scene. Chuko becomes the snake that bites its own tail, and the audience is tasked with understanding how it all could have been prevented. Does upward mobility constitute leaving your old life and old ways behind? Should vengeance be withheld even in the midst of righteous anger? Are marriage and a career the only answers to a happy, peaceful life? Or is tragedy waiting for all of us, no matter the choices we make? Is it all just a matter of time? Hey everyone, we want to give a thank you to everyone who recommended this movie for us to watch and review. That includes Mr. L. Salazar, 714, Xanax and Zirup, Mike Laugh, Bully871, and a very special thank you to Danny De La Paz, who starred in the movie as the role of Chuko. Thanks again for the recommendation, and keep in mind, we here at Same Differences will happily review, analyze, or discuss any movie, music, TV show, comic, or entertainment topic. So leave a comment anywhere to let us know. We'll be back with more, and as always, likes, subs, and shares are greatly appreciated. Thanks to all of our subscribers. We'll see you next time.